أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم IBM SPSS AMOS So before we start using AMOS I'll be giving a few very basic lectures and we start with what is SCM Structural Equation Modeling So what is Structural Equation Modeling? Structural Equation Modeling or SEM is a statistical method that examines the relationship among numerous variables in a simultaneous way. So you can have multiple variables in a model. You can have multiple independent variables, multiple mediating variables, multiple moderators, multiple dependent variables. All of them analyzed together. Now this is an added functionality which we do not have in first generation softwares like SPSS. Now a SEM is not a single procedure but it's a rather a family of related statistical techniques. This family of analysis techniques examines the measurement properties of the variable that includes the reliability and validity along with the interrelationship between variables that is your structural model used to assess the relationship between variables whether for example an IV influences the DV or not. And this is often seen as a combination of regression and factor analysis. Now the use of SCM will often take a confirmatory approach in which the researcher has proposed a model that has different relationship between the variables and what he does or she does is that they examine whether the observed data will provide evidence of directionality and significance of relationship. Now SEM is very similar to multiple regression but it is much more robust and has greater flexibility in analysis. Now what it does is it allows you to model multiple independent and dependent variables, error terms, interactions and correlations. Not only independent and dependent variables, you can have your moderators and your control variables and your mediators as well. Using a SEM model will also let you denote which independent variables will influence dependent variables and subsequently let the dependent variables be independent variables in other relationship. So you can have your independent variable, you can have your mediating variable and then you can have your dependent variable. So in the relationship of independent and mediator, the mediator turns out to be a dependent variable. And, the, in the, and in the relationship between mediator and dependent, the mediator turns out to be an independent variable. Now structural equation modeling is fundamentally built around the idea of modeling or drawing a model that represents a relationship between variables. The model will use symbols to represent variables, relationship between variables and even error in your model. So you will have symbols that will link the variables and establish the relationship between variables and also show the error terms in your model. Now SCM begins with a theory where the researcher intends to test the relationship among constructs of interest in the study. For example, you have got social learning theory whereby you want to assess the impact of leadership on employee honesty. So this model or in structural equation modeling you can test these relationships. The relationships are modeled into a theoretical framework represented by a schematic diagram. That's part of your theoretical framework. Now the schematic diagram presents the hypothesis of interest that are to be tested. The construct of interest involved are measured using a set of items in a questionnaire. This is normal what we do. We have got multiple items representing a construct. And the measurement scale of each item should either be interval or ratio. Now when you are using structural equation modeling, your scale item should be measured on interval or ratio scale. Now what are the advantages of using structural equation modeling? Now the main advantages are that it lets you analyze the influence of predictive variables on numerous dependent variables simultaneously. So there is no restriction that you will have to have on the one dependent variable. It allows you to account for measurement error and even address errors in predicting relationships. So you can account for the errors and address errors in predicting relationships.
It is capable of testing an entire model instead of just focusing on individual relationships. That's what we normally do in regression analysis. This is in direct contrast to similar techniques like regression used in SPSS that can test only one dependent variable at a time and it does not account for your measurement error and focuses on singular relationship instead of a collective whole. Now is SEM causal modeling? You will often hear SEM referred to as causal modeling approach. Well, SEM does not determine causation between two variables. There is a contradiction that is used quite often with SCM. Now, as stated earlier, SEM uses covariance metrics as its input. So you are essentially looking at relationship between variables to determine how one influences the other, but this will not determine causation. Just because two things are highly correlated does not mean that one causes another. SEM is a great technique to determine how variables influence one another based on the covariance matrix. But in order to determine causation, you will really need to do experimental design so that you can change the cause and see the changes in your outcome variable or your criterion variable. While the majority of SEM approach has been performed with non-experimental data, SEM is more than capable of analyzing experimental data. So if you've got experimental data, you can use structural equation modeling. Now, these two terms uh, have been like used a number of times. You've heard of it. So what's the difference between a variable and construct? Throughout the series of videos, the viewers would find the term variable and construct actually used interchangeably. Now, what does a variable mean? A variable is meant for directly measured score, such as age, exam score, income, height, or many others. Whereas a construct is measured indirectly through different observed items. For example, you've got five items for job satisfaction. So job satisfaction is a construct that is measured indirectly through those five items. In fact, the construct is a hypothetical concept of something or the respondent's perception concerning a certain issue. So you measure the perception using individual items. And a construct is measured through set of items in a questionnaire. Now, what are latent constructs in research? In science and social sciences research, most of the time the researchers are dealing with latent constructs. And as it has been said earlier, these constructs are measured using set of items in a questionnaire. I'm going to show you a questionnaire uh, in a while. Since the ordinary least squares procedures, OLS procedures, could not entertain latent constructs like normal regression in SPSS, the researchers need to employ SCM for analysis. Now, using this SCM, the researcher could model the relationship among the constructs together with their respective items and analyze its impact on other variables as well. Now, in this case, at least two measurement models are involved. One is for independent construct and the other is for dependent construct. Your independent construct might be measured using four or five items. Your dependent construct might also be measured using five, six, seven items. Now, the theorized link between measurement model for independent construct and the measurement model for dependent construct is called your structural model whereby you are assessing the impact of one independent construct or measurement model for independent construct and its impact on measurement model for dependent construct. Instead of modeling the OLS regression and analyze using ANOVA, the researcher is working with structural equation modeling and analyze using softwares like AMOS and there are other softwares as well like Smart PLS, EQS, Lizeral, M+. Now, what's the minimum sample size required for SEM? There are endless debates, but there, is, there are no clear-cut answers. However, here and others offer the following suggestion for minimum sample size, depending on the complexity of the model and basic measurement model characteristics. If you've got five or less constructs, each latent construct has more than 
three measuring items, you would need a sample of 100. If there are seven or less latent constructs and each construct has more than three items, you will use a sample size of 150. If you've got seven or less latent constructs, while some constructs have less than three items, 300 is enough for a just identified model. And you've got more than seven latent constructs, some constructs have less than three items, you need a sample size of 500. So this is a suggestion by here and others. So how do your <coughs> So how does your measurement model and structural model differ from each other? And how do they look? The measurement model in SCM is where the researcher is going to assess the validity of the indicators of each construct. Not just the validity, but the reliability as well. So we are assessing the quality criteria. And once we assess the reliability and validity, then we proceed to structural model, where we test the relationship between A and B. So this is your measurement model, assessing the reliability and validity of one single construct. And this is your full structural model, whereby one independent variable, one independent measurement model influences the other dependent measurement model. So you are assessing the relationship between A and B. This is your structural model. Here you are assessing one single measurement model or one single variable. So the structural model is all about assessing the influence and significance between relationship of the constructs in the study. The term full structural model means that the measurement and structural relationship of each constructs are included in the model testing. So this is a full structural model because we've got the items here and we've got the two variables here. So what are these parameters? The term parameter indicates the size and nature of relationship between the two objects in the model. Parameter can be fixed to a constant or can be estimated freely from the data. A parameter estimate will take place on the measurement model with indicators and error terms as well as on the structural level between the construct. So we use parameters for our estimation. How, you, how we use it, we'll be looking at it in more detail. Now here is a sample model in AMOS. This is your one variable. This is the other variables. These are the indicators. These are error terms. These are the parameters, this one. And this is your parameter. And you only need one with the indicators, not with all of them, but just one. You're going to practically look into, look into it. Now, have a note, X1 and Y are latent constructs. This is your latent constructs. They are measured using these observed indicators. And they are represented by an ellipse or ellipsis. Maybe an oval, a circle. The latent construct X1 is measured using items X11 to X15. Whereas Y, which is your dependent variable, is measured using five items Y1 to Y5. The measured items, something that is observed, is represented by a square or a rectangle. Your x1 is your exogenous variable and your y is your endogenous variable. And these are your error terms. Now, if you want to have more detail on what is SCM, you can obviously go and use these references. Very good books uh, for learning structural equation modeling. Thank you very much.